If you're looking for a restaurant or place to eat near you, you're probably using Yelp or Zagat or something like that around me on your iPhone or your Android phone. But those are totally unsatisfactory because they don't use your social graph to bring you the best places your friends have found. And today we're at Nest Computing to find out a new way to find a restaurant. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Corey Reese, CEO of Nest Computing. We've been working with Paul and a bunch of folks on the team here for the last several months on our new company. Before that, I was an associate at Allsop Louis Partners, an early stage technology venture firm up in San Francisco, where I got to invest in some great companies like Justin.tv, The Walla. Before that, I was at UC Berkeley, worked on a bunch of startups there. And who are you? I'm Paul Tui. I co-founded Nest Computing with Corey. I did my undergrad at UC Berkeley and then uh, dropped out of the Stanford PhD program in computer science before I started doing the startup thing. I did a bunch of geospatial search stuff at Palantir and I was recruiting for Palantir when I met Corey and we launched on uh, this adventure. This is a weird place to start a startup. It seems like a house or something like that. Can you tell me where we are? Yeah, so uh, we're in an undisclosed location on the peninsula in a residence that we found. As uh, many of you know, folks know in startup world, real estate these days can be pretty expensive and so when we were looking for a place to house our company we looked at a bunch of the usual types of locations in areas like Mountain View and Palo Alto and Redwood City but the price was really high and just so turned out we were able to find a place on Craigslist that was a wonderful fit for us with plenty of open space, a really nice outdoor space and a couple of private offices. So we found the most economical thing to do in today's market was to start our company in a house. Tell me what it, what it is you're building, because it's pretty cool. Well, what are you guys doing? Well, yeah, so, so, so the problem that, uh, that, that Paul and I found was a pretty broad one. We started working on the company in the fall of 2009, and we thought to ourselves and said, hey, it, it's really challenging when I use a traditional search engine, when I want to go and find something. It, it doesn't really feel like the, the computer knows me or has a sense of who I am or who my friends are, the stuff that I love. And we said, well, what if we could build a, a service, a, a, a piece of software for, for people that would understand that? So when you want something, when you're hungry, when you want to find a movie, when you want to find a place to go and shop, you could go and get just that right little recommendation that feels like it really knows you. So we got together and recruited some of the smartest folks that we knew from Berkeley and Stanford to start working on this technology to go and understand what I love. So the way we look at the, the problem is that we have, you know, we've, created this service that's gone and indexed a whole bunch of location information about places, people, and activities. And then we've gone and we kind of understand the gestalt and the overall popularity of those places. And that kind of sets up the framework for Ness. And then when you sign into Ness through Facebook or another social service, we can understand how those places relate to your friends because we're able to tie in that metadata. And at the end, we've created this likeness engine so we can understand exactly what my things are going to be that I'm going to like. And so, you know, all these other places, they're, they're really good services, but they don't understand the essence of what you are and how you want to get food or you want to get, you know, movies or something else like that. Yeah, I, I call this the masses is asses problem because <laughs> uh, like on Yelp or on, on a lot of these review sites, um, somebody who's been to one sushi restaurant is rated, it has the same power as somebody who's been to 30 sushi restaurants, right? And you, you also don't have the social context there because you probably care a lot more about what an influential food person has to say or what your friends have to say than what a random person has to say. So, you know, we've seen other places where, you know, Gary Danko has had, you know, a five-star review from somebody who says they can't wait to eat there and they've misspelled there. Yeah. And, you know, that's just not, you know, that's not really relevant to me, but maybe it is to their friend group. So I think you hit the nail on the he head there. We look at it as a, as a relevancy problem, much like how Google said, hey, we're gonna go and get you the best website by looking at all the inbound links and the authority of those links to the website. We said, well, if you're looking for a place to go or a thing to do, let's understand all of the people talking about that place, but let's go and build an understanding of who's an authority or expert in that particular topic or that domain. We modeled all of that. We, we started with restaurants, because that was one concrete slice, but we had to understand how people go and make a decision about where to eat and how people use language to talk about what the best stuff is. And after we figured out that, we said, well, let's go and slice that for a person so we can understand their friends and their unique personal preferences. This, this idea of uniqueness, the, uh, the set of um, things that excite somebody, that's kind of how we came up with this concept of a, of a likeness engine. 
And that's where you got the Nest name? That's right, yes. So we, we said, well, we have to build a search engine to go and index all the stuff. And on top of that, we, we build a recommendation engine that will go and, and combine the preferences of a person. And when we tried to figure out, well, what would we call that? There wasn't a great thing out there. But we've been working really hard with all the sophisticated technology to do a really simple thing, to have a score that says, this is how much we think you're going to like something. We think that's yeah. a great way to go and, and introduce somebody to a new place or a new thing. And we said, well, a likeness sounds like a good way of describing how much I might like it. How, how do you make that score? Is it based on the friend graph I have, or is it based on my past behavior? Like, if I go to sushi restaurants every weekend, the chances that I'll like another sushi restaurant are pretty high, right? So we, we incorporate a number of factors in there. So we, we, we can't tell you the secret sauce, just the same way Google's not gonna tell you the secret sauce for how they rank you know, pages. But you know, we do look at all the social streams that you let us index. You know, and so if you, you know, use Ness and you've hooked us up to Foursquare, we'll use your check-ins to help give you better results. And what, what other kinds of systems are you studying? So, you know, for you know, Facebook, if you had the status updates in Facebook, so if you go and you say, oh, hey, I had a wonderful, you know, butterfish, you know, nigiri at Zushi Puzzle, we will understand that you're talking about Zushi Puzzle, and we'll make sure that that helps uh, influence the results as well. Are you looking at the Facebook Places check-ins So we, well? we do both Facebook Places check-ins and freeform textual information. Okay. So the more I tell the world what I like, you know, like, hey, I'm having a great time at, yeah. at this barbecue restaurant. Or, you know, exactly. Or so what we want to do is we want to make it so the more you express about yourself and your individual essence, the more Nes can give you results that will line up with how you like to live life. And, yeah. and we think there's already a tremendous amount of inf information out there about this. If you look at the way that people use social services like Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, they're always on them telling their friends, hey, this is what I'm doing now. This is what I love. This is who I'm with. We did a really interesting experiment. We said, let's go and look at all the status messages that Corey had in the last year. There were 128,000 status messages across my social graph. I have about 1,000 friends. It's quite a bit. Yeah. And we then said, let's see if we can figure out how many restaurants those status messages referenced. And it turned out that about a half a percent of those messages were talking about restaurants in our index of restaurants. So we were able to pull out 900 implicit recommendations from unstructured data from my friends alone talking about the restaurants that they were eating at. And it's our belief that as we index more and more domains, restaurants, nightlife, movies, travel, shopping, entertainment, arts and culture, we can build a really accurate profile of the stuff that my friends are talking about, the stuff that I'm interested in, to go and make a fantastic experience so I can go and turn to my device, boot it up and say, hey, I wanna go have some fun tonight, I wanna have a great evening, find a great meal, and it feels a little bit like magic because it remembers that great thing that one of my friends said a year ago that maybe I'd forgotten, but I took a mental note of and said, oh wow, that sounds like a great Greek restaurant to try the next time I'm in Atlanta. Now that, that sounds like it works great for somebody like me. I have 1,800 friends on, on Facebook, and I'm studying 32,000 people on Twitter, so I'm getting really great recommendations on your app. What about somebody like my dad who's been on Facebook, I think just about a month now, and has you know only personal family and friends uh, as, as friends, so he's not getting a whole lot of that kind of restaurant data that you were talking about. Well, before. so there's a couple ways to look at it. You know, you don't even have to use Ness through Facebook. We have a logged out experience, and so if you don't give us any personal information, we'll just give you an experience that tells you what's popular around the spot under the assumption that you kind of like, you know, the average of humanity. And the more we learn about you, the more we can give you personalized stuff. So you can go and you can choose to follow, you know, certain people in your graph. You say, oh, I, I want to follow, you know, Robert Scoble, because you know I really like you know he's my dad, you know, he's my son, and I really like his his you know food preferences. But maybe you've got the crazy ant somewhere that no you know like they only like to eat crazy things, and so you, you don't want to follow them. And so the more he goes out and finds people that he likes and whose tastes match his, the better experience he'll have. And this is kind of how life works in general too. Or you keep that crazy ant in your social graph. You know, <laughs> those are the places I don't go. <laughs> yeah, and, and we've made it really easy to set up. So I actually had uh, my mom over uh, a weekend or two ago. It was Mother's Day. She came out here to our office. I've been working really hard. And she's like, so, so show me this thing that you've been working on. I said, well, hey, mom, here's your Mother's Day present. I, I've set up an account for you on Nest so we can go and pick a, a restaurant to eat at. And she goes in and it says, hey, share with us a couple of your favorite restaurants, pick a city. So you can go and choose a city, Palo Alto, Sunnyvale where I grew up, San Francisco, and it'll show you all the most popular restaurants in that city. You can go and rate them. By the time you've rated 10 of those restaurants, it takes maybe a minute or so, it'll start understanding 
what your preferences are. So we were able to quickly find that out for my mom and I. She found a great spot to go and have a nice um, California cuisine meal, Calafia down in Palo Alto. We had a wonderful time and she said, hey, that's great. I think this is gonna be a service that me and my friends who aren't really, really um, avid users of all of the latest and greatest technology would get a great deal of value. So, and that, and that sort of gives me a hint of where it's different from Yelp or around me. It's personalized data. T tell me what I see, on because I've used it, it's pretty cool. So the first thing off the bat, uh, you download Ness and you open up the app and it says, hey, share with us some of your preferences. Go and tell us some of the places that you like. And it'll invite you to go and rate 10 places. You can import your check-in stream. It'll show you all of the restaurants that you've checked into that we know about. You can go and quickly rate those. We think it'll take a, a minute or so for you to do that. And then instantly, when you go and see search results, you can browse. We, we think it, that uh, eating is a very visual experience. So we have this interface where you can swipe left and right to visually browse all of the different cuisines that we know about. So you could find something, let's say, uh, I've gone and rated it. The system knows that I like Japanese food. I want to go find a place in Cupertino that has Japanese food. So I click on that and it now shows me a list of results. And there are two things that are radically different about this than other services. There's this little percentage score in the upper right hand corner there. That's the likeness score for something. The system yeah. is trying to guess how much you're going to like that. And it'll get more sophisticated the more information you share with it. But you'll also see as you scroll down the results here, there are mentions from other services like Facebook or Foursquare or Ness itself of my friends who have rated things in the system, who have checked in, who have left a tip or a message. So I can go and I can browse where I'm gonna eat tonight based on my personal preference, my likeness score, and all of the great content that my friends have created in the app. Does it, does it warn you that, hey, you're looking for a, a Japanese restaurant in the Italian district in New York or uh, the Italian district in uh, in San Francisco, does it, does it have that kind of knowledge of place? Well, so actually, that's one of the things that, that we've tried to work into it. We have this thing we call recommendation explanations, and it shows up and it says, hey, you, you'll like this place because people who are similar to you like that. Well, one of the explanations is, oh, you're looking in a city, and this restaurant is known for that type of cuisine in this city. So, for instance, in Berkeley, if you, uh, if you were looking around there, you might stumble across Kerala. Well, there are, wonder, there are a number of wonderful sushi restaurants in Berkeley, and you, you might be able to say Berkeley is known for Kerala. So in our interface, it'll say, hey, Berkeley is a great place for sushi, try Kerala. But it's only making that recommendation if the system knows that I love Japanese food or sushi. And we think that's a really cool way of explaining a really complex thing that's happening behind the scenes to a person. Yeah. Does it, does it lay out on a map where these places are and how to get there? Or, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about how it gets you to the restaurant. Yeah. So, so the first thing you do is you see a list of places and you select the one based on your likeness for it and what your friends have done. And then you'll get an overview of the information we know about it, your predicted rating for it, your likeness, the messages from your friends. Once you say, hey, this looks like a good place, you could hit more information. And then it gives you all the information you need to go and take action on that. You'll see the address there, there's, a, there's an icon that says map, you can tap that, and then it'll go and sh ask you if you wanna open the map, it'll show you a map of how to get there, you could hit the button to make a phone call, or you could go and share that invitation with a friend, they get an email and says, hey, Corey has shared an invitation to Kerala with you, here's the address, open it up in Google Maps. One of the things I loved when I was using yeah. this app was it showed me friends who have visited that place, who, because of their fa fa Facebook uh, places check-ins or their Foursquare, it actually has a little Foursquare icon underneath each place. Yeah. What, what else are you gonna do with that to help us find the places our friends really love? Well, so there's a number of things we do. So, you know, first of all, we, we, do, we pull in all the metadata from Foursquare, so, you know, you can see the tips from your, my friends, but then I can go click on my friend's name and I can go see all the other places that they've checked in. So I can explore their, you know, their feed from what, what I can see, so. Um, you know, like, oh, hey, look, Corey's gone to Kerala, and like, I'm looking for sushi, and I'm in Berkeley. I'll, I'll go there. Uh, and, and so th there's uh, there's another thing we haven't talked about with you yet, but we think it's really cool. It's not in this version of the app yet, but it'll be coming soon. It's to be able to calculate your similarity, your likeness to another person in cuisine. So we can actually go and model how similar my food preference mm -hmm. is to Paul. So when I'm looking at a list of people, let's say uh, you're there and I see that uh, that you have created a lot of content on a bunch of different services when I'm choosing to follow you it'll show a little percent just like we do how much you're gonna like a restaurant that says this is your similarity with Robert so I can say oh wow Ooh. this person has a really 
uh, close similarity to me, so I'm going to go and choose to follow them. And we can model that for any type of domain. Now, that, that's sort of useful. That would, would be really useful is when you are with a group of 10 people and trying to figure out where to go. <laughs> and, of course, I like sushi, but, of course, like Rocky doesn't like sushi, so now sushi's off the list. And, and I like steak, but somebody else is a vegetarian, so that's off the list. And we end up with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, right? <laughs> it would be neat to have a, a, a way to put 10 people into a system and then have it say, this is the best three restaurants for the group, and then have them choose it. And, and that's absolutely, absolutely right. That's a really hard problem because yeah. there are people who have very specific preferences for things. If you have somebody who is a vegetarian or somebody who needs to eat gluten-free choices, you want to make sure that you get it right. That's something that we're really excited about being able to do, and I wouldn't be surprised if that were a feature that we ship uh, a little bit later this year, but That's we great. think that'll be really awesome. Yeah. Very cool. You also uh, cover all the basics, right? Uh, you show when the restaurant's open, and you base it on the time that you're actually searching yeah, on, right? so we Yeah, so when we have hours of operation data for a place and we're searching, you know, we will we use that information to help influence the search results. So if it's 10 o'clock at night, you know, and you're doing a search, you're probably hungry and you want something that's open now. So we will go and make sure that places that are open are ranked above places that are closed. So even if there's a place that you normally go to and it's open, and you know, now because it's closed, that will be near the bottom of the list and we'll show you some place where you can actually get a bite to eat. Yeah. So let, let's talk about a, a little bit about how you guys are uh, gonna get the word out. Cause it, I imagine the, the tough thing, yeah, the algorithms are tough, the building the engineering team is tough, but now you gotta take on Yelp and you gotta take on these apps that have been on my iPhone for years. How are you gonna do it? So you know, one of the things that we think is really great about the service is that it gets better the more of your friends who are using it. There's a classic network effect in place. So we can do things that are really simple. It says, hey, get recommendations from your friends, improve how your results are, well, you can have a simple call to action that'll open up a picker, so you can go and choose to invite some of your friends. You could choose to ask them to come on so we can show you your food likeness with them, which we think is a pretty cool feature, and you could just tap their name, and it'll go and use their SMS uh, from the phone address book or send them an email. We'll also do the standard sort of thing, so you can syndicate contact back, content back to Facebook and share all the stuff that you're doing with your friends. Yeah, so you're really trying to use us to get the word out, it's vi virality. Well, we would uh, we would love that. We'd be flattered. Yes, <laughs> yes that would be really awesome. And that, that shows the power of this. That as more people join it, it gets better, right? That's right. Right now it's a little weak in some areas. We did some, I've already shown you some cases where Yelp is still better because it has more data, but soon, as more and more people get on it, the data is gonna get better on this system. That's exactly right, and with each person who joins, we pull in ancillary amounts of information, so if a person signs up for it, well, we can index into their social graph, so if we have one new user, we'll be able to go and have much more information than just that one person because we're connected to so many other different accounts. Yeah. Today you're announcing uh, one based on restaurants. Are you thinking of other places to use this technology? Absolutely. Uh, so we're really excited about all of the different times when people have to go and make a decision using their mobile device. We think there's some really cool stuff we can do around helping people find great places for nightlife, for music to explore, places to shop. When you want to go and travel, you often think, where have my friends traveled? Well, the core of our technology, the likeness engine, uh, would be a great use for those types of applications. This is a free app, right? Yeah, it's free in the iTunes App Store available today. The app is called Nest on your phone. Uh, it'll show up in the iTunes catalog as Nest Food, and you can get it right now. Okay, and uh, why not Android, why not Blackberry, or Windows Phone 7, stuff it, like that? It will be on those platforms eventually, but when building the product, we wanted to make sure that we got the core feature set locked down. When we get that right, we'll start adding it over to other platforms like the iPad, the web someday, uh, and of course Android. Yeah, and who's investing in you? Uh, uh, tell me about how the company's formed and how old it is. Yeah, so uh, we started the company in the fall of 2009. I was working as an associate at Allsop Louis Partners at the time. They incubated the company up in San Francisco, and we then moved down here to the peninsula and has since brought on a, a great cast of investors, advisors. We've got some of the early folks from Palantir, yeah. well, where Paul has worked, uh, Tomorrow Ventures, and Coastal Ventures are uh, providing the company with venture assistance. Im impressive investors. You have a uh, sizable team. It's not just two guys in the garage, you know, like Instagram was when I first right. saw it, right? Right, right. How, how many people are on your team? So we've got about 15 people now. Yeah. Uh, and, and for what we're doing, we really have to have areas of uh, excellence across a variety of different disciplines, obviously product design, but to be able to go and build a scalable system, we have to have folks with a systems engineering background 
we have several people on the team with machine learning backgrounds, and then of course, iOS engineering, which is uh, a very uh, tough skill to find these days. Because you use what I call uh, bendable social graphs, in other words, the if, if there's people who've been in a four barbecue places, they get they are the ones who bring me the barbecue recommendations, not the average Joe. So it avoids that masses is asses is problem. Your database schemas must look pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> so we spend a lot of time modeling our data, and uh, we think it's one of our core strengths. Yeah. But how are you, how is that different than the average guy with with a my my SQL database that's just flat? You know, because it, it's doing a lot of work. So it? we are doing a lot of work, and I, I don't know what the average guy does, uh, <laughs> but I, I do know. Well, well, like we, Facebook, right? Uh, they don't try to do this. They don't try to bring back different results based on different kinds <laughs> of uh, people's experiences, right? Yeah, but you, I mean, when you look at Facebook, right? Everyone gets their own personalized newsfeed, yeah. and so you know, we, we everyone gets their own personalized search results from us, and so well, yeah, we've had to build out a bunch of new technology for that. And I should mention that we are hiring, but. Uh, you know, it's it's a hard problem. Yep. I don't really want to talk about how we do all that. Fair enough. <laughs> Translation: the patents aren't yet <laughs> filed. <laughs> Some have been. Some have been. Well, thank you so much for yeah. giving me the first look at this. It's uh, it, I'm always interested in how to find better places and better experiences yeah. in life, yeah. and that's going to be a lot of fun to play with. Yeah.